Hello and welcome back to another Friday FX tutorial here on Premiere Gal. In this tutorial, you're going to learn some techniques I use to turn a regular old stock video shot into a picturesque Jessica Jones inspired look. For those of you who haven't seen Jessica Jones, I'd highly recommend it. It's a TV series on Netflix and here is a clip of what the opening sequence looks like. You can see it has this painted look and most of it was illustrated and animated. To start, that opening Marvel title sequence you saw at the very beginning of this video, that was actually made in After Effects using a template I purchased from Envato Market, which I'll link to below. Just open up the template in After Effects and update the title to be anything you want and drag and drop your own photos, and that's it. So let's get started in the Jessica Jones look in Premiere Pro. Here I have a sequence without any effects on the stock video clips. It's just generic New York stock video that I got from Pond5. But of course, you can use your own stock video you shot and simply apply the same effects I'm going to show you. So in this particular tutorial, I'm gonna break down how I created this shot in the alleyway. This shot had the most going on, so you'll learn the most and be able to apply it to any other shot that you're working with. To start, let's adjust the image look. So in the Lumetri color panel under basic correction, let's reduce the exposure just slightly, let's say to negative 0.3. Then from the creative tab, let's apply the Cinespace 2383S RGB 6-bit look to this shot and let's reduce the intensity to about 55 so it's more blended. And let me turn it on and off here to show you the difference. And now it's starting to look more dark and rough and it's heading in the Jessica Jones direction. Also at the bottom of the panel is the vignette section and I rarely use vignettes, I don't really like them, but in this case, this was a perfect use to use the vignette. So here I dropped the amount down to about negative 2.5. I also dropped the midpoint to 20 and added a bit of roundness to around 0.5 and I feathered it out to around 75. And now if I turn the vignette on and off by hitting this check mark here, you'll see it's a big difference and it makes it look more dark and more gloomy, giving it that rough edge that Jessica Jones has. Next, to give it a more painted look, I search for a free effect in Premiere Pro called Turbulent Displace. Then I drag it on the clip, immediately it looks way too warped. So you have to refine this effect using the effect controls. And here I change it to a horizontal displacement since I want to make it look like the brush strokes are going left to right horizontally. And then I increase the intensity to about 200. And then for the size of the displacement, you want it to be much lower, like around two. And then you can increase the complexity of the lines to let's say around seven. And then you can see that the edges are more rough and they look more painted. And to give it more of a painted look, let's search for posterize and apply this effect to the video. Now what this does is limit the amount of colors displayed. So if you drop the posterize level down to two, it becomes way too posterized and does not look good. So I'm going to set mine to five. But still the posterization is a bit much and it brings out too much yellow color in the image. Let's search for an effect called leave color and let's apply it to the clip. And let's select that blue color of the chair in the alley using this dropper tool. And then let's decolor the rest of the image to about 50%. And let's soften the edges as well. Now when I turn the leave color effect on and off, you can see that before it was just way too yellow and now it's more focused and it looks a lot cleaner. And to give it more of a purple and blue tint, let's search for the tint effect here and drag and drop it onto the clip. Then from the effect controls, I'm going to map the black color to a dark purple and map the white to a darkish gray blue. And then let's reduce the amount of tint to about 25% so it's not too intense and more subtle. Now let's add in a moving silhouette figure because if you watch the opening sequence here of Jessica Jones, it's full of silhouette figures. So I went to Pond5 and I found the silhouette figure of someone who looked injured. And since a lot of people in Jessica Jones get injured, it seemed perfect. 
And by the way, you can film and create your own silhouette sequence with any budget camera with a green screen. You can follow my silhouette tutorial to learn how I turn myself into a silhouette using a green screen that I just got from Amazon. And I'll link to this tutorial in my description box below and also put a card above. So I dropped this silhouette on top of the video clip here and you can see that there's a white background. To remove that, I search for an effect called color key and I'm going to drop it onto the clip here. And then using the dropper tool from effect controls, I'm going to select the white color. And then here you need to adjust the edge thin and increase the color tolerance until all of the white around the black silhouette is removed. Then I selected the motion tools from the top of the effects controls to scale down the figure and I repositioned it into the alleyway. Then let's also apply the tint effect to this figure and let's use the dropper tool to select a color from the alleyway so that way the figure will have the same tone and color as the shadows in the alleyway. Also, we need to place the turbulent displace effect to the silhouette figure. To do that quickly, let's just go back to the first video clip and from the effect controls, you're going to select that effect and go up to edit copy and then select the silhouette clip, go to effect controls panel and go up to edit and paste. And now the turbulent displace effect is on the silhouette effect. If I zoom in on the program panel and then turn the effects button on and off, you can see what it looked like before and then after. And now here is the fun part. It's time to play with paint and texture and overlays to make the shot more interesting. I went to productioncrate.com. I use them all the time. They have awesome effects and overlays to give your footage an extra edge. And the great part is some effects are free so you can play around with it first. And if you like the effects and you wanna get one of the effects that has the yellow star next to it, you can get a pro membership, which is just $49 per year. And I've linked to the specific overlays that I used in this tutorial in my description box below. So here in my project panel, I have two folders that have all of the blood and paint effects that I used from Production Crate. So first, let's start with the multi-stroke paint overlays. I'm going to use multi-stroke two and place it on top of the video clip. And using the effect controls, I'm going to rotate it down so it's pointing down towards the light to mimic sunlight so it looks like it's sun rays. That's how a lot of the effects are done in Jessica Jones. A lot of the light sequences look like light rays, but they're painted. And of course, you can resize it in place until it looks right. I also hit R on my keyboard to activate the rate stretch tool so I could change the length duration of this clip. I slowed it down to match the duration of the video clip below. And then I chose this multi-thin paint stroke five painted overlay and I dragged it on top of both those clips. And now I'm just going to transform it to be on the right using the motion tools from the effect controls panel. I also added a single wet paint stroke one from Production Crate and I placed it on the left side of the frame and to give it more texture and I rotated it downwards as well. And I like adding just the single stroke because it makes it feel like it's a painting in progress. And after all, Jessica Jones is a work in progress if you watch the show. And you can add as many of these single wet paint strokes as you want. And remember, I'm gonna show you how to blend these in in just a second, but first let's add in some blood effects. Okay, so first in the lower left corner, let's place this blood explosion overlay. And using the right stretch tool again, I'm going to extend the length out. So it'll be a bit slower, but it'll match the entire length of the sequence. And let's use the effects controls to get it in the position that we want. And then of course, let's place the blood hit lens overlay from Production Crate at the bottom center. And let's use the effects controls to get it in the position that we want and rotate it up. So now let's start blending so it doesn't look like a bunch of blood and random painted overlays. Let's change the first painted overlay to a blend mode called soft light. And immediately you can see it's more blended in. And let's do the same with the second paintbrush strokes. Let's also change it to a soft light. Then for the wet thin stroke, I'll use a color dodge blend mode and change the opacity to 50%. The difference here is that color dodge will make it more vibrant than soft light. And it adds a little bit more dynamism in color to the shot as it blends with the purple tints of the video below. And then for the blood explosion, I changed it to a color dodge 
blend mode as well and I reduced the opacity to around 30. Then I added a tint effect to it and I mapped the black to white and the white to a hot pinkish color because in some of the Jessica Jones scenes you see some splashes of pink color from the original opening sequence. As for the blood spatter, I changed this blend mode to overlay and I added a tint and mapped the black to white. And now you may say, well, how did you know how to use all those different blend modes? Well, honestly, it came through trial and error and testing different blend modes until I achieved the look that I wanted. And adding these blend effects is literally like painting, but unlike real life painting, you actually can undo a blend if it doesn't look right. And lastly, we need to add the fence and a focus blur on the scene. In Jessica Jones, there is a moment in this original opening sequence where the fence goes from being in focus to out of focus. So here I have a fence overlay, which you can download from my blog. I have a link below. This fence is part of a forthcoming collection by Production Crate and more info will be coming later this year. So for now, you can use the free one that I have from my site. So I'll drop this fence graphic layer on top of all these other layers and I'm going to scale it down to around 65% and move it into the place that I like. Then I'll select the first video clip on video layer one and I'm going to go to edit and copy. Then I'm going to go to this graphic fence layer and I'm going to go to edit and paste attributes and it will paste all of the effects that we applied to that first video clip to the fence scene. So that way it has all of the other effects so it looks like it fits in. And next, let's add in some keyframe motion so that way the fence moves. So to set a keyframe on the position and scale of the fence, hit that stopwatch on both the parameters. And then you can move the current time indicator ahead roughly two seconds or so and scale it up and shift it over to the left. So now it animates over. And while the fence is in focus here, I want everything behind the fence to be out of focus. To do this the most simple way, just lasso and select all the layers beneath the fence and right click to make a sub sequence. And this new sub sequence will be over in the project panel and you can rename it to anything that you want like alleyway scene. And now you can drag and drop the sub sequence underneath the fence and this holds all of those layers within it. Now search for the Gaussian blur effect and drop it onto this subsequence. Then from effect controls, set the blur at 30 and make sure it's a horizontal and vertical blur. And then as the fence begins to scale in, set a keyframe there. And then after it's done zooming in, make the blur zero. And now the background animates from out of focus to in focus. So let's do the opposite. Let's apply another Gaussian blur to the fence. And as it starts to zoom in, let's set a keyframe at zero. And as it zooms in more, set the blurriness to 30. And here, let's also make the fence zoom in just a tad bit more and get more blurry. So let's set two new keyframes up here at position and scale and have it scale up and move closer in around the silhouette in the alleyway. And then let's also set a keyframe on the blurriness again and move the current time indicator towards when the new zoom goes closer in. And then let's change the blurriness to 60. So now you can see it moves in initially. And then as you move in closer, the blurriness gets stronger. And now let's render it out because there's a lot of effects and may take just a short time depending on your machine. And of course, for music, I chose a mysterious electric guitar track from Soundstripe called Catalyst. Soundstripe is a great place to get music for your videos. It's only $15 per month for unlimited music tracks. You can use any music for any type of video and there's no licensing restrictions. Plus, you can get 10% off with my code GAL10. And I've linked to my Jessica Jones inspired playlist in my description box below. And let's play the scene back now to see how it looks. It looks pretty awesome. And also from the original opening sequence that I'm playing back here now, if you want to know what fonts I used or any other elements that I used in this full sequence I put together, I'll link to all that info below. 
So let me know what effects you learned in this video that you plan on using in future projects. Be sure to leave a comment below. And if this video helped you out, be sure to give it a thumbs up. YouTube likes it when you like my video, so liking it will help my videos do better. And be sure to subscribe and hit that notification bell so you're notified when I make new tutorials every week. Also, come on and join the Premier Gal Patreon community by becoming a monthly patron. You can ask me questions directly there and your questions get priority. And of course, you can get some free templates that I design each month. Thanks again, and I'll see you all very soon.